let's just take a minute here and appreciate that we actually have open weight models in the top 10 for most used in programming on open router quin3 coder at number two on august 11th anyway is such a good model i've i've talked so highly about this model if you follow me at all you know how much i like it but i like it so much that i had kind of ignored glm 4.5 which is still respectably in the top 10 here and in particular if you look at the the way this leaderboard set it's number nine and if we click in you can see that there are a lot of apps that are actually using glm 4.5 kilo code still number one root code client open code etc now i set out today to only use glm 4.5 on everything i did in my production code base i ended up having a great day so like when I first start wanting to use a new model, I like to use it a, a good amount. And if I don't feel the itch to like go to a different model or just get frustrated with it because it's so slow or tool call failures are happening, I am very happy. And GLM 4.5 was great at what I did today. And I'll show you some of the stuff I actually built in my app. Now I did use medium reasoning all day long. The config 0.6 provider z.ai just wanted to pick that directly. I did actually find that the recommended config 0 0.6 is to 0 0.95. And actually, I didn't find it. Someone sent this to me in Discord. The person that sent it to me, I want to thank you because you are a big fan of this model. You pushed me to actually use it all day today. So I appreciate that. But there are some issues with it. Most notably, if I go and I grab the laser point here, most notably, it's this context window. And 131,000 is just very, very tight for anything coding related. So you really do need to keep your tasks really small, not have them spam a lot of files, no big files, no big refactoring. But the speed is good, and the latency is pretty good, and the price is, is very, very respectable. But I will say this context window kind of makes it the type of model that even though I enjoy it, I really do enjoy using it, I can't use it in a larger spanning task. And I'll get into some of the settings that I set up in Drew Code to get past this for today. But I do think it's important to keep that into context. So here's some of the stats. I did 21 commits today, 27 files changed, one new file. So I mostly worked on existing code, 830 lines added, 603 lines deleted, net of 227 lines. I did do a lot of POCing of like new stuff that I'm working on in the future, all with GLM 4.5. But these are my production commits that I actually made to my uh, dev branch. Actually, they haven't gone to prod yet. They're in dev currently. All of my changes, I had AI summarize it for me. So you can kind of see these were lighter changes. There was like some bigger stuff. So uh, there were some like bugs in my streaming system for how text was coming in. So I did work on that. Some minor stuff for some UI type things. There were a, another bigger thing with the e email editor improvements, but generally smaller kind of bug fixes, a lot of UI, a little bit on the, uh, the back end side, and it handled it great. In fact, let me just give you a little bit more ideas on kind of my general thoughts here before I get into it. It really was pleasant to work with. The tool failures were very minuscule. I think I had three all day long, but it was more expensive than I expected. So let me just show you what I ended up spending on this thing overall. So I did end up burning 31.3 million tokens. Now, this is broken up over multiple days. I will say at one point I was at 10.3 million he, uh, today and like 300,000 before. So I believe I probably burnt around 30 million or so tokens today on this model. So a lot of tokens, more than I actually anticipated. And I spent about $19 on it. Uh, there is some weird time zone type things because this $2.93 is actually whenever the time zone flipped, I just was working, but this used to all be together. Regardless of that, that is kind of pricey, right? If I'm spending $19, $18 a day, doing any type of coding task, and I do that, let's say 30 days a month, let's just say 20, 20 to 25 days a month, that ends up being pretty expensive. So something to keep in mind, and it really shows you like how good a value things like Claude Code really are, because this is a model that is a fraction of the cost, has a lower context window, and I'm still burning more money on this than I would if I was just to use Claude Code. But at the same time, it's good. It's a really good model. If you can keep your chats really small don't let them get have to get recompressed don't kind of follow chains out longer you can keep individual chat threads under a dollar but the thing was you saw i did 21 commits i was doing a lot of a lot of code with it today 
a few things that I actually, you know, have really been thinking about now is how well it reads between the lines. In fact, I actually was given a ticket um, in Asana that was kind of not written very well. And in fact, my mind was kind of like, uh, I don't really know what they want. I just gave it to GLM 4.5 and I had it kind of figure out what it wanted. And then I asked the PM, the, the product person, they're like, yeah, that's perfect. So like it did a really good job kind of translating human language to what actually needed to be built there. Uh, medium reasoning, I did end up going with that where before I think I had been using low reasoning on some of my evals. Medium reasoning, I just bumped it up some, did a great job. I did try this in a bunch of other AI coding tools. And if you look at the chart from Open Router, it says it's usable in Klein and it's all of that. I think that's tough because this is an example of Klein over here. And what we end up having is Klein ends up just stopping working here. And this happened to me a lot. It does a really bad job handling the context. In fact, the context actually came in as only 98.3K because one of the pri providers, I can't actually pick it, it picked the, the provider with the lowest amount of context. So that wasn't ideal at all. So let me move this over just a little bit here to make this easier to read. Now, it is usable in open code. I did actually test it there. It works fine. You do still need to configure the things, like I said before, uh, in the opencode.json file. Klein, you can't really do that. And some of the other ones, I'm not exactly sure how to do that. I made a post on X today really talking about we need to normalize being able to set these things up. I know a lot of people do not know what these things need to be, but I would freaking love if I could drop a JSON file with my settings and just share it with everyone that I've already spent time kind of figuring out what the, everything needs to be or grab it from someone else because there are so many people out there that actually have better settings than I do. I would love to be able to share these model configs, temperature, top P, top K, all of that stuff between all of us so that we can actually have the best performance in whatever provider we're using. So in VS Code, there is a setting right here where it says compress prompts and message change to the context size. This was the only way I could actually use this today. If I uncheck this, after four or five messages, I max out context. So this was key. But the problem with this is I don't know what we're losing by using this particular checkbox, but 90% of the time it worked fine. I had some chats that actually ran up to $3 and some, and it worked fine. And I could tell that the context window was being compressed in. I think it does slow things down a little bit and add some latency to things because I could kind of tell when that was happening. I would like to actually dig into the code and understand that a little bit more. But if you're using it in root code, use this. And that's one of the other reasons why I worry or wasn't able to actually get Klein to work as good as I thought I could, because it would just hang when the context ran out. It didn't seem to actually work very well with whatever compression was actually happening there. You could take a look at some of my other settings in here as well. It is really good at front end, especially animations. Let me just pull over into my app here. A couple things that we actually worked on today. This empty state, pretty minor stuff, like not that much, but let me show you something. If I click this, ask the AI to create an email, look at this little cool little animation here. See these, see these like tetraminos? Uh, I actually had it build that for me and it looks so much better than my other thinking animation that I used to have there. This would normally not look like this, by the way, I've actually enabled dark mode via this extension. So this isn't exactly how my product looks, but I don't want to blind everyone. So I, I actually have it set this way, but you can still see the tetraminos that are there. It did an incredible job building that. So some of the other things that it actually built today, just to kind of show you here. Now, this is a real-time face filter app, something that I like to test a lot of models for. I tell it to create the assets. Basically, it's going to need to use the camera. So I turned off my camera in OBS right now while I'm recording. I'm going to turn on my camera in Chrome and I can basically put on a party mask. I can apparently put a rainbow over my nose, wear a crown, put a dog nose on, cat ears, put a mustache. It, it drew all this itself. Those are cool glasses that are overlapping with each other or none. Um, it's kind of neat. I don't know if the take photo actually works. That's actually pretty sweet. But this is something that I was able to do really, really, really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera because I'm sure I look goofy on this thing right now. Now, another thing that I ended up building was a 3D autonomous drone. Not many models actually do a great job at this. When I saw this, I was like, oh, we actually do have a drone. So let me go ahead and start hit start simulation. Check that out. Pretty dang sweet. And then you can actually change the uh, avoidance. So it's going to like change the way it passes around all this stuff a little bit. Let's, let's drop the sensor range. Let's drop the speed and let's see what it does. 
yeah, so now it's actually just going straight because the sensor range is a lot lower. But in general, it handled this like a champ. Let me show you something else that I worked on real quick here. By the way, this is the email that I generated uh, using our AI. It looks kind of cool here. Uh, a lot of it's just placeholder images and stuff like that. Again, it would normally be white. I have it in the dark mode. It doesn't look quite as good. But let me show you this, this little piece here. If I type, notice how like this fades in and out. These are like little help things. GLM did that really, really good today. And one of the other cool things that I built for me today is this search functionality. So rather than having this just open all the time, is being able to toggle this up and down just to clean up this UI a little bit. And it's got like a really nice kind of highlight of it and everything. I'm not a UI guy. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I have typically stayed away from front end development, but I have to do a lot of it now. Small company, I have to do all a ton of this. And GLM 4.5 did an amazing job at this type of thing. And now I'm getting a little bit more into the meat of my, my product here. Um, I came here. We have this these like components that get stitched together to actually make these AI generated emails that look really good. Uh, I wanted to be able to move some of the configuration that we have that kind of like tells you what the thing is about the component up so that we can activate it, deactivate it here. Did it first try. Like amazing, amazing stuff in general. But like I said before, it was all relatively simple things. There was nothing like trying to build a web kernel or something ridiculously complex or massive. In fact, the most massive things I did spanned like three files maybe. And I had to go through and fix a lot of bugs and change a bunch of stuff. And it excelled all the time. And just to show you, aren't these Tetraminos like super cool? Is that not the coolest loading animation you've seen so far? Anyway, I just uh, very excited about that. I was very happy that it came up with that for me. And to show you this, before I configure this model, just using the default root code settings. So basically all the normal stuff, just default. On my e-valve, it scores 19,100, which is actually kind of bad. But with the config, it scores 23,670, which starts to get up there into the, I would say, enjoyable range, the reasonable range, especially with smaller tasks. And to show you this in comparison to my last chart that I posted, you can see it is well within the range of, you know, the, the 23,000s. It's, it's in between Quint3 Coder using Cerebrus and the Eider 8 or 3 Is it Claude Sonnet 4 level? No, not by a long shot, but it's good. It's a good model, has a lot of style. Medium reasoning seemed to work great for me. I have not tested high reasoning much. And if you have, I'd love to know in the comments below what you think about it. But it's a model that you can use really, really cheap if... You do really small things and you do not let your chains get too long. My, some of my, like I said, some of my chats actually got up over the several dollar mark, which is really surprising when you look at the overall pricing of this thing being 60 cents and $2 and 20 cents. And I actually found, I believe because of this setting in Rue code here, this compressed prompt and message chain to the context size, I believe I'm messing up prompt caching because my cache values were always really low. So I think that's a double edged sword. I think if you're, using this to be able to do longer things, you're actually gonna pay more because prompt caching gets messed up. Hopefully that makes sense. Whereas if I just was able to do something small enough to fit within the context of the 131K, I'm good. I could probably pay 20 cents and be totally fine there. So yeah, overall, great model, really enjoyed it. I'm so happy I actually went through this experiment today. Is it a model I'll use again in the future? 100% I'd use it again, especially for small UI things, just to get cool ideas on it's so good to have models that are good at designing things. I could use GPT-5 to actually do a UI for me. I can use GLM 4.5. I can use Sonnet. Again, I'm not a UI guy. I'm not a designer. And I really like having these models to actually give me kind of UI that I can then pick between, take the best of each of them and actually go fully implement. Just incredible. Anyway, I think that's going to be about wrap it up. Let me know in the comments below if you've had a chance to try GLM 4.5. If these kind of thoughts that I actually had using it today resonate well with how you think about GLM 4.5. Otherwise, I'd go give it a whirl, at least for some UI stuff, light tasks. You may find it actually really enjoyable to work with. I know that I definitely do. And as you can see, it's still being highly used on Open Router, so we know that people are enjoying working with it on at least coding tasks, which is important to me. The other model I'm very interested in is this GLM 4.5 Air because I actually find it interesting that there are more tokens going to the Air model than there are to the regular model. Also, GLM 4.5 actually did release a vision model, which I have not had a chance to test yet, but I've heard really good things about it. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Gone on long enough. I hope you guys are doing awesome and have a wonderful day. Until next time, everyone. Peace out.